Redness can be one of the most frustrating and challenging aspects of rosacea to treat. In this video, we're going to break down what causes redness in rosacea and how can we approach it. I'm Dr. John Barbieri, a board-certified dermatologist and African rosacea expert. When we think about redness in rosacea, it's really fundamentally about vascular hyperreactivity. We have blood vessels in our skin, and they can be stimulated by all different sorts of things like UV radiation, like our microbiome. And people who have rosacea, particularly redness, those blood vessels are too sensitive to these triggers. So when we think about treating redness and rosacea, a fundamental aspect of that is just good general skincare. We need to be thinking about daily sunscreen, at least SPF 30 to 50 or more, to help block that UV radiation that can be triggering those blood vessels. We want to think about what we can do to help our skin barrier using good moisturizers. We want to think about if in our own lives we've noticed any triggers in our diet or our lifestyle that might be driving that redness and rosacea. But for many, that's not enough. We need to go beyond just general skincare. One strategy that can be a helpful starting place is just cosmetic camouflage. Rosacea, redness can be hard to treat, and sometimes the best solution is just to help cover it up. Green tinted primers and foundations can help to counteract that redness and can be a good starting place for people who are struggling with redness and rosacea. Beyond cosmetic camouflage, we have a bunch of topical pill medicines and then also procedural treatments that we can do to help with redness and rosacea. The first set of medications we use to treat rosacea are creams. And there are really two main medications that we use here, oxymetazoline and bromonidine. Both of these medications are called alpha agonists. They cause the blood vessels to squeeze down the skin. And in rosacea, right, that redness is due to vascular hyperreactivity. Those blood vessels are too active. There's too much blood flow to the skin. So if we use a cream that does the opposite, that tells them to shut down a little bit, to have less blood flow to the skin, that can help address redness and rosacea. In general, both of these creams can be helpful. They provide a temporary improvement in redness lasting about eight to 10 hours. However, it does seem like with consistent use, there may be a decrease in overall redness over time. Both of these medications have a potential risk of what's called rebound, whereas the medication wears off, the redness can actually be a little bit worse than when it started for a temporary period of time. It seems like this may be more of an issue with bromonidine than oxymetazoline. So in my practice, I generally prefer oxymetazoline to bromonidine when we're thinking about cream treatments for redness and rosacea. Now, oxymetazoline is available as a prescription cream that goes under the brand name Rofate, but there also are ways you can get it as a compounded medication. And actually, oxymetazoline is the main ingredient in Afronasal spray, which is available over the counter. It is a lower strength than the creams that we use to treat rosacea, but there have been some reports of using that lower strength oxymetazoline, mixing it maybe with a moisturizer and using it to treat rosacea. So that's another strategy that's available. We also have pill medicines that can help with redness and rosacea, particularly with flushing. And these tend to be beta blockers, the same idea, as oxymetazoline, we're trying to really calm down that vascular hyperreactivity in the skin. And the main ones that we use here would be like propranolol or carvedilol are examples of beta blockers that we can use to help treat severe flushing in rosacea. In addition to creams and tablets, we also have a bunch of procedural treatments that can help with redness and rosacea. These tend to be lasers or other energy based devices that target redness specifically. They use a wavelength of light that's preferentially absorbed by the red in our skin that's able to help get rid of that without hurting our normal skin. And these classically are devices like pulse dye laser, KTP laser, NDAG laser, and sometimes even intense pulse light. A nice feature of these procedural treatments is that they tend to provide a durable improvement in redness. As I mentioned before, the cream treatments like oxymetazoline and bromonidine, they provide a temporary improvement of redness lasting about eight to 10 hours. And while they can cause some reductions in overall redness with consistent use, the laser and light-based treatments have the advantage of you do a session and that redness is just fundamentally less, you do another one fundamentally less, and you get a durable improvement in the redness of rosacea. Often it does take about two to four sessions to reach peak improvement with these devices, but those gains that are achieved with these energy-based devices, they tend to persist over time. And so those who are looking for doing a couple of treatments and then not needing to be doing something daily to address the redness and rosacea, these can be a really nice option. In addition, lasers and energy-based devices tend to work better for telangiectasias, those kind of broken little blood vessels on the skin, than other kinds of creams or pill medications for redness and rosacea. Another technique that we can use, especially for telangiectasias, is called electrodesiccation. 
where a small electric current is used on top of the skin to cause some localized injury to be able to specifically target those small broken blood vessels without causing too much damage to the surrounding skin. So to put it all together, we have a number of treatments that can help address redness and rosacea. And what's really important about these is they tend to differ from the treatments for bumps and rosacea. Very often I'll see a patient in the office, they have both bumps and redness, they were started on a treatment like metronidazole or ivermectin or azelaic acid that often is great for bumps, but tends not to do a lot for redness. So while the bumps have improved, that redness is still there. And that's why it's so important to use redness-directed strategies when it comes to treating rosacea. And this really starts with basic skin care, like protecting ourselves from UV radiation and using moisturizers to help the skin barrier. Moves on to things like cosmetic camouflage, like green tinted primers and foundations. And then we start to get into more prescription-like treatments. We've got the topical creams like oxymetazoline and bromonidine that can provide a temporary improvement in redness lasting eight to 10 hours and may even reduce redness overall with consistent use. We have procedural treatments like lasers and energy-based devices that can provide a more durable reduction in redness. And then finally, for severe cases of redness and flushing, we sometimes will use pill medications like beta blockers like propranolol. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like so that we can share it with more in the community and consider subscribing to our channel to stay up to date on the latest in acne and rosacea treatment. If you have any other questions about rosacea, leave them in the comments below and tell us about your experiences with treating redness and rosacea. See ya.